celebration that we've been anticipating to see what God did. I want to show what God did in 2018 using EWC. Y'all ready? Right. <laughs> okay, so I just want to talk a few minutes about the power of one. Back in the first part of November, the Lord said, the power of one as the message for today. And I started pondering on it, and I thought, wow, that's a big subject. There's going to be, you know, this to do with it and that to do with it. And I thought, Lord, I'm not going to have time to do everything if I have to teach this effectively. So what did he do? He said, the power won to Pastor Katie. <laughs> Two weeks later, she says, oh, we're going to talk about the power of one. It was, it was the unity mm -hmm. that I wouldn't have had time to cover effectively, so he gave it to her. Praise, Praise God. God. <laughs> and you didn't have, no, you didn't say I didn't have it. a clue that right. he was going to do Praise that. God. I was just saying, well, I don't know how I'm going to do this, because it's such a big subject. One, because unity, the power of one is unity in the body, and, but it's also the power of the individual, the one person. Amen. And so that's what this is about, is the power of one person to change your world, the world. So I don't have any scriptures, I'm just going to talk. Tell Pastor that I have, I have come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to have, but I want to just say that um, one person, the way Christianity is, it's so, the gospel is so powerful that if you put one person in a nation, and that's the only person in that nation that has a relationship with the Lord in five years or ten years or a month or whatever, that, that gospel is going to spread. Amen. It will spread. Just one person who has a relationship can go into anywhere. You can go into your workplace. You can go into the grocery store. You can go anywhere and watch the kingdom of God be established in that place. I've seen it. We've seen it. You can change the atmosphere and wherever you go just because of who's living inside of you. Amen. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. And that same power has the power to change lives in your realm of influence. Amen. So that's the power of one. And so, a couple of stories in the Word, if you think about it. We were talking about this last night with Abraham. There Abraham is in an idol shop looking at these handmade idols. And like I was telling him last night, I believe that Abraham loved to look at the night sky. He's always looking at the stars, and that's what made him think there's got to be something more yeah. than these handmade idols. And that's all God needed. Yeah. Oh, here's somebody looking for me. Boom. He, he, he has an invitation into the earth, into that man's life. Yeah. So he takes Abraham, and he makes him uh, the father of many nations. He takes that one man, that one life, and nations were born out of it. Yeah. Impossible nations. You know, impossibilities were made possible through that one life. Yeah. Then you think about David. Here's this little guy that's been out in the woods, the, you know, tending sheep. But all the while, he's building a relationship with God that's powerful. Yeah. You know, he killed a bear and he killed a lion. And so he... He's going up to bring food or whatever to his brothers, and he sees this big giant, and to him, well, God killed that bear and that lion. This guy ain't nothing. Right. So that one little guy, 17 years old, kills this huge giant and brings victory to that whole nation. Yeah. yeah. Turn that whole nation around, and then God used that one guy to unite all 12 tribes. Yeah. They were united under one kingdom for a long time yeah. until the sin split them. And then Jesus. Yeah. Nobody made more of a difference in the earth than Jesus. Yeah. As a man, the son of man, time is marked by him. Yeah. 
how we set time. Well, that was before Jesus came. Oh, we're in 2019, 2019 years after Jesus left the earth. That's how we mark time. Yeah. I mean, they can put whatever labels they want on it, but it's marked by his life. Yeah. That one life. And then you look at the people that he ministered to, like the man, the madman of Gadara. Jesus comes down from the mountain all night with the Father with the purpose of going to deliver that man. He wanted that man healed and set free, but he also wanted the town yeah. that he lived in. Yeah. I don't feel any way. He wanted that town because he knew that one man, his testimony was going to bring those people close to the kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen. And that's exactly what happened. Amen. Of course, the man's like, oh, let me go with you. Let me go with you, please. Let me go with you. And he's going, no. You need to go back and tell everybody what God did for you. And he did. So when Jesus came back around, because they drove him out the first time. Oh, you're, you you ruined our economy. You need to get out of here. They were mad. All their economy went in the sea. But when he came back around, because those people knew what that man was. Yeah. His transformed life. So they welcome Jesus back by that one man. Yeah. Then the woman at the well. Okay, here's a woman in Samaria where Jesus specifically said, Now y'all just go to the lost house. Don't even go to Samaria. You know, we're all I'm sent here. But yet Jesus goes to Samaria for the express purpose of talking to that woman. And he went to midday, the heat of the day. If anybody's been in the Middle East, you know how hot it is. So, and she can't go in the morning or in the evening because she's an immoral woman. She's an outcast. You know, the women of the town shunned her because she's immoral. She's had five husbands, and she's living with this guy. She's not even married. You know, who knows she's going to be with next. And so they didn't like her. But Jesus came along and talked to her more. He, he had a longer conversation with that woman than anybody else. Turned her life around. She goes back into the town and tells the men, because she knew they'd listen to her. The women wouldn't listen to her. But that whole village was impacted. Yeah. Because she said, this man told me everything I've ever done. She testified. And so you see how the power of one individual yeah. turned that that her realm of influence was turned around. The madman's realm of influence was turned around. God wants to use our realms of influence to turn things around. Amen. Bring people close to the kingdom of God. And so I want to demonstrate how the power of one church impacted the world. Amen. So that's what we're fixing to do. Okay? Okay, so 2018 has been an important year to Jesus, Jehovah. And you're going to see it in the next few slides. Okay, go ahead. So I know I've said this before, but at our Jerusalem, is our immediate realm of influence. People that we know personally. And in, in uh, our church, it's the people we interact with as a church. So I just want to go over what we did, BWC did in our realm of influence. We had a lot of intercession and proxy prayers, just like the one we did this morning for, uh, for Katie's friend, for loved ones, and we've seen healing. Yes. Come into lives through intercession and proxy prayer. <clears throat> Tabitha's boutique was able to furnish a desperate grandmother with clothes, groceries, and household items to start over. Then, the path, then we went out on occasions and prayed with people right in their homes. When people call, we went because it's an opportunity. And when an opportunity comes up, you want to move on it. 
So then BWC was also able to help a single mother who had a really hard situation. And we were able to help her. So that's in our Jerusalem. That's in our immediate people call, people let us know in our immediate Jerusalem. And here's some pictures of what we did. Here's our Bible study. There's the delivery of the, well, not this time, but that's the only picture I have. <laughs> Giving clothes away. Giving clothes away. <laughs> and then the beautification project we've been doing. We started, and I want to tell you how Jehovah is all into the, our beautification project. He's a gardener. Yeah. He's a master gardener. And he every time we worked out there in that garden, I have felt his presence. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the summer, we would be sweating, and he would bring a breeze yeah. at just the right time. And you knew, he, it's like he went, it just blew on us. <laughs> Because we were we were doing it for him, it was worship to him, and you know, of course everybody remembers the sod day. How yes, it took us a week to recover. <laughs> <laughs> and then we landscaped the front of the church. We got raised flower beds. We have a beautiful cross from Sister Donna's son Justin. We carved out the new driveway. And we've moved Tabitha's boutique building over here by the church. And we had the beginnings of our water feature slash garden in the front. We haven't finished that yet. But we'll go ahead, Molly. What are we going to do next in 2019? We're going to lay salt on the other side. We're going to install, we're going to landscape the, the two trees and a water feature. And then we're going to uh, complete the fencing. And we're going to also fence in the prayer garden because we're building a prayer garden. And then Tabitha's Boutique, we're going to build a storage building and renovate the current building as a functional outreach building. And then I can't wait to see what God does with the prayer garden. Yeah. That's going to be incredible. And this is the journey. <laughs> the journey of BWC. Wow. There they are. At the very beginning, wow. creating the building. And then we evolved to this. Where we had our bed and we had our patio. Wow. And then we, wow. you know. Look at that. There we have some more landscaping. Wow. And here Good we are man. today. Wow. Look what Beautiful. God has yeah, done thanks, wow. in our little church. Remember the patio. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Until we did the cement part, it was it was all flowing. Oh yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> but it's beautiful now. It is. Look at that. Lush. Okay. So now let's look at our Judea. So we participated in a few outreaches in 2018. Uh, the worship in the park and the worship on Washington Street. Yeah. And then we participated in the citywide revival with Pastor Wells and Rivers of Living Water and the other four churches, other three churches. And then we went to, we did some outreaches in Lake Charles and around the river. And then we went to the Ragley Heritage Festival this year. So we want to do along the same lines, whatever comes up, because now we understand it's as we go. Yeah. <clears throat> so as things come up, we go. And that's going to be our outreach. Okay, and so there's a picture I have of the worship in the park. And that's all I have for this evening. We didn't take any pictures, so we got to be more yeah. <laughs> off of taking pictures of our events. <laughs> so this is what I wanted to do or we want to do for outreach goals. Uh, we want to get out and do the family fun nights that we're starting, that we started in uh, 2018. Continue that throughout this year. And also, as individuals, yeah. the power of one. Remember the power of one. As individuals, we need to be, be aware yeah. of mm -hmm. our everyday 
Absolutely. You know, our everyday walk, our everyday life. And just be available. Because that's all God needs is somebody that's available. Yeah. And, you know, a seed is a seed, even if it's just a smile. It's still a seed. That's you show the love of God some kind of way, a smile from your eyes, or, you know, help if, some, if you see somebody needs help with something. Yeah. You know, we all do that. We all try to be aware to do that. So that's how we're going to reach out. Because we're not really about the numbers of people who come here. We're trying to build the kingdom. Amen. Because the kingdom is, is the focus in this Amen. season. Okay? So now let's look at our Samaria, which is our country, the USA. And we reach our country in four ways. Through our website, through the Google ads, through the Facebook page and the ads we do there. And the Rhema Registry of Churches. Pastor Katie's had people call who've looked in that registry and called for help. Yeah. And she was able to pray for people. And also, our website has a wealth of training documents and videos that are feeding the sheep around the world. People, Christians in nations that can't go to a church, like Saudi Arabia. You know, a lot of times, the only way they can get fed is online. Yeah. Because they can't really control what goes on their news feed or, or go, you know, what yeah. they look at. For the most part, some countries do have it locked down, but a lot of them, they go to this website and they look and they read stuff. They can download it and print it. They can watch the videos. They can translate it into their language. Yeah. Okay? So, our website is a very, very <laughs> comprehensive website. It's, it's got a lot of depth to it, mm -hmm. and it's got all kinds of places to go in it. And so you can spend a lot of time out there just exploring it, reading, learning, feeding on yeah. the Word of God. Because we have a Bible study center, a media center, even a place to meet Jesus here, a place to meet Jesus to pray the sinner's prayer. And then pages of information, and what I've found is the longer you work on a website or a blog, the more impact it's going to get. Because God's going to start expanding it. He'll start bringing it deeper so they'll have more depth to it. And He'll do that on our website because I've seen Him do that on my blog. Amen. Okay, so here's our website. It's kind of stretched out, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> but you see the depth of it. And all these things up here um, are just as deep. There's all kinds of things to go to do on this website. And see, so here's like the study center. Look at all, and that's just what I could fit on one page. It goes down further. Then this is just the current videos. That if you click on the archives, it way down there. So there's a huge depth of information and knowledge and training and feeding that a, a Christian can do from anywhere in the world or the United States and get fed. If they can't get out of their house, they can still get fed. Yeah. Okay? And this we have, if somebody has a question about anything, they can type in that question and we'll get back and come in our, our email and we'll answer it. And then also if anybody has a prayer request, we can pray with them, uh, you know, come together and pray for them, whatever. Okay? And this is where they can meet Jesus. But they come here and they're hungry and they don't know Jesus, they can meet him right here. Okay? So I wanted to kind of highlight the Google app. Molly launches Google ads throughout the month to drive traffic to our website. And it's a small price to pay to help people get free to meet Jesus. And God is using these ads in a big way to bring people closer to Him. Amen. You're going to see it. Yeah, it's about $45, right, Molly? Yeah. yeah, about $45. So only eternity is going to show the level of impact these, these ads have had. But I can give you an inkling. Amen. In the next few slides. Okay. So here's the stats for 2018. 
we had 3,107 users, 3,107 users for the whole year to our website. Wow. And we don't have a lot of return, but we have a lot of new users. And you can see the stats there. 66 people Praise went to the God. Jesus page. Wow. So how God. many of that number actually prayed the prayer? You know, Bible study, 83 people. People were looking to contact us, 196. And a lot of, most people just went to the home page, but hey, they, they could be back. Because when the Holy Spirit's directing this, yeah, you know, there are circumstances. You know, I remember that. Wait, so I'm going to go back there and see. So you can see over the year that we've had quite a nice impact. Yeah. Okay. What happened to my map? Don't know. Reached two million 
99,689 people wow. around the world with the gospel. We preached the gospel and it reached that many people. 91,330 responded. Whether they were mad, glad, or sad, they responded. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. And 467 yes. went to the Meet Jesus Here Hallelujah. page to pray the prayer of repentance. Praise God. Wow. So, hey, for 20 bucks, that's a, that's a huge return yes. in the kingdom. That puts a big cha-ching in your bank account in heaven. Yes. So this is just the month of December. No, no, this is for the whole year. Oh, for the whole year. This is the whole year. Okay. The 2018 final tally. Okay. And here's the chart. I love my charts. Look, we kept off 2018 huge. We sure did. We didn't get it. Wow. That's the biggest one we've ever done. Wow. Because more people put in because of the soul seed jar, and we had more people putting in ads. It went. Wow. It makes a huge difference. A huge difference. Eh. Hey. Okay. There's the map. This is the map for the soul seeds. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of hard to see, but the blue, the shades of blue are the nations we reached, and the gray is what we didn't reach. So we have reached almost all of the Western Hemisphere. And... It's kind of hard to see it, but um, like these are gray, this is yeah. gray. But look, Pakistan, Nepal, they they were a lot. Yeah. The Middle East, but Saudi Arabia, even Mongolia. Wow. Which is not very populated. Wow. And then up in the northern parts, you can't tell, but those hard to reach, Iceland, Greenland. Yeah. Some of those are also were reached. Yeah. And those islands. And yeah. all the islands, you can't even see the islands that have been reached. Wow. Praise God. So, that was exciting. And then, of course, we got nobody in Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> For obvious reasons. Yeah. Okay, so now let's talk about the uttermost parts of the earth. That's where we go out. <coughs> so, even though we're a small church, we have a big, foot, a big footprint. Yes, amen. In the earth as far as preaching the gospel. And God has systematically wrung this church to reach a huge audience around the world. So we do this in four ways. We support our missionaries monthly and help our sister churches in Nepal and Kenya. We, our video messages are uploaded to YouTube every week and to the website. We do our Google ads and our soul seed ads. That's how we reach the uttermost parts of the earth. Praise God. Yeah. So let's look at our missionaries. We have the Geek Center in Israel. We send them $100 a month. Power Ministries in India, $200 a month. And Sally Ministries in France, $100 a month. <clears throat> and I want to tell you, these ministries are in tough, tough harvest fields. India's persecution of Christians is increasing violently. Israel, Messianic Jews and Christians are like at the low end of the social spectrum. Sally Ministries says one percent of the population is evangelical Christian. Okay, so God has instructed us to sow finances to these mission fields, so that's what we do. Okay, so Power Ministries in India <clears throat> is headed up by Claude Diane Johnson, and they train leaders to spread the gospel and start churches all over India. And they've sent out hundreds over the years. They train them and they send them out. And then we send them $200 a month to help with their expenses and training supplies. So, you know, ask the Lord. He may have you, he may have you sow something periodically throughout the year into that, to that ministry. Okay? And here's some of the students. And that's them in their worship time. And that's one of their outreaches, the more recent outreaches, where people are just lined up to be prayed for. And this is a team that's going out into somewhere to minister the gospel. And you see they're, they're praying. You can see how they're 
connected with God in their expressions. Wow. Okay, the Sally <clears throat> Ministries in Duvain, they've been, they're, they're established now, they've been settled. I think they got almost all the money that, that they were hoping to get to get reestablished. And I tell you that they have 1%, okay, it's got 67 million people there, so that means 670,000 in the whole nation are Christians, evangelical Christians, out of 67 million people. Wow. Oh. Not even a million are, you know. So it's a tough harvest field because many are atheists or agnostic. But, because of the immigration, 12.5% is now Muslim. Wow, they got more Muslims than Christians. Oh, yeah. Wow. Because, you know, there's a, a huge influx of massive immigration. Okay? So, <clears throat> we support the salaries with $100 a month. So, you know, also consider, ask the Lord. When mission, Sunday, when mission Sunday comes around, just ask him, what do I do? And he'll tell you. Yeah. Then there's the Sallys with their three boys. And that's Duvain, France, where they're, that's their harvest field. They have no evangelical church in that village at all. So they're, that's, their, that's their church. They've established a few people. You see the power of one at work here? These mm -hmm. one family went into a place where there was no church. Yeah. And look what they got. Praise God. So God is going to grow it. Because God's a master gardener. <laughs> yeah. He's going to grow it. And there's Brian in front of their house. I love their house. Mm -hmm. The farm, French farmhouse. Okay, so Duguid <coughs> is in Tel Aviv, Israel. And we've been supporting them since 2013. Well, and we met them at the coffee shop, which, by the way, they are done with. Their renovations are complete. I don't have any pictures of it yet, but they're excited about, you know, they're ready to go. And nobody can take it away from them. Right, it's it's theirs. And so we have a share in that because we sold $1,000 into helping them get a building. And so they've got their outreach center, they've got the distribution center. And so we sell $100 a month, and for them to purchase that, so that is really awesome. Because you don't know what a miracle that is. In Israel, uh, real estate is prime. It's, a, it's, you know, the whole country is the size of New Jersey. Yeah. So real estate, there's like, it's not the expanse of the United States, you know, it's, it's a tight Everything's real tight. The Jews that are Messianic, they are bottom. They don't like to sell to them. They don't like to rent to them. You know, so them getting this was a God thing. Okay? So, what they do is they, uh, they use that coffee shop to preach the gospel over a cup of coffee. They talk. They go out from there and bring people into the coffee shop. Then the distribution center provides physical help to people. And so they reach people with the love of God that way. And they partner with other Christians, including Arab Christians, in Israel to do outreaches. And then uh, Avi travels to other nations to preach the gospel. They, pay, they play music on the streets. They have musicians. They just go out on the streets in the parks. They host Israel tours. And then they have the VIP um, prayer room that overlooks Tel Aviv, and they pray for they pray for Tel Aviv, which is like the Vegas of Israel. They have the largest gay community in Israel. So they are persecuted, but they won't back down, and they haven't given up. So continue to pray for them, and you know, again ask the Lord to continue to help them. There's Avi and one of the tour, one of the tour people. Okay, and that's the VIP prayer room with their huge menorah, and that's in their distribution center, or I can't, I think it's their distribution center where they're, they have books and the coffee shop. You see.
see how busy it is. Now, is, is that a new picture or? Well, go back I, to that coffee shop. On. Go back to the coffee shop. Or is that the, one of the old? Ones? I think it's one of the older ones, and it may not be the coffee shop. It may. Not. It looks like the coffee shop. But that's the coffee shop. Yeah, because that's a keyboard right there. Yeah, there's a keyboard, and they play music there. So. Yeah. Anyway, that's, so then we have sister churches. We have two now. We've had one all year with Nepal, and now we have Kenya. So uh, we've been supporting ABC Church since 2016 and seen them go from five to 500. And, and that's their new name, <coughs> Beauregard, Hodesty, Good Hope Church. Yep, Kenya is now Beauregard. Hodesty, good hope church. <laughs> I had to what talk him into that. Huh? I had to talk him into that. He just wanted to name it Burgard. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> but you see that how they honor how how. Yeah, you know, I just think it's really cool that they want to do that, and I think it's cool that they've got a board of elders and they're still meeting in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're discipling them and bringing them along, and I just believe God's going to do great things. But they already have uh, three more people, three three uh, new people. It's thirty-five. Thirty-five. <laughs> wow. Thirty-five people. Praise God. Okay. So let's talk about ABC Church in Nepal. So we've been uh, mentoring Raj and Ermila for two years. In September of 2017, we completed our first pastor school where we taught 20 young pastors how to establish a powerful church in Nepal. And through this, we were able to provide 20 bicycles for them to use in their, in their travels. And in 2018, they were out trying to establish house churches. And as of today, they have eight solid house churches established where they're, they're solid. They had 11, but, but I think three of them kind of failed. But three saw so eight solid ones. So, because some of the pastors just they had to leave and go work a secular job. We all know how that is. So in 2018, they broke the 500 member mark. They had to had to build an overflow area and have gotten technology to show the, to show the people in the overflow area. Then they have one sister church in Delhi, India, for Nepali believers that are working there. And then um, Raj is the overseer. So pray for him, y'all. You really need to. You'll see. You'll see a message in the video. He shares his heart to BWC, um, and I'll probably have to translate a little bit for you. But he um, he's got a lot. So if you think about him, pray for his strength of mind and everything. And he's been receiving speaking invitations all over the area and into India to speak, which is why he was so uh, absent in 2018. <laughs> so all the works under his oversight do intense fasting and prayer and are seeing the fruits of that effort. All the pastors, the young pastors, have to spend uh, three days a week fasting wow. and four hours a day in prayer for their church. Because that's what he does. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so Raj reports that his relationship with Jesus has deepened greatly and he is beginning to flow in the prophetic gifts. Praise God. Praise God. He's been seeking the gifts. Yeah. So they've had over 100 baptisms in 2018 Woo! with 50 more waiting to be baptized after the winter's open. Over hopefully when we go, we get to baptize some people. <laughs> okay. And I know I've shown this one before, but this is the best picture they, yeah. they have with their overflow Beautiful. area and uh, their boundary, what he calls the boundary. But they just put the cross up there. I mean, you know, they're just not yeah. shy about anything. Yeah. And there's one of the house churches. And there's one of the baptisms. From five to five hundred. Wow. That was one of the first pictures yeah. he sent me. That was their church. Wow. Every morning they met at 5 in the morning and prayed for a 
couple of hours. And this is their church now. Wow. Five to five hundred. The power prayer. And this is their 2018 Christmas outreach where they do skits and they do um, they do skits and, da and dancing, you know, group dancing. And then they preach the gospel. Once they draw a crowd, they preach the gospel. <laughs> they draw the crowd and they preach the gospel. <laughs> Very simple. I mean, they just use what they have. I think it's just so cool. Okay, there's Raj preaching the gospel after they did their dancing and stuff. And there's his daughter, Sushan, in her dress. Her, she's, she's a dancer. And so she was dancing. <coughs> you see all the women are just... They used to, this was the tough village, the one that we prayed for. Yeah, look at that guy. Look at them. Look at the unfriendly faces. The body language. The body language is like, should we go get them? But see, they passed through because we prayed and they passed through unmolested. So, Beauregard Goodesty Hope, Goodesty Good Hope Church. They found us through the Google ads. The Google ads. Yeah. They found us. We felt, we felt that Pastor Lewis was genuine and because all he wanted was some teaching. Because he couldn't print them out. He has no, he has no technology <clears throat> other than his old cell phone. So they were thrilled to get so much meat, and they have been fast feasting on it ever since. So every single day they meet in the woods. Okay? okay I've already shared Naomi's testimony. I was going to share it if um, Jennifer and them were here, but they're not, so we're going to go on. Y'all seen that. So the latest news is uh, Pastor Lewis asked us to consider to come to Kenya to baptize and meet with them. So we're praying about that. Also, they have formed a board of elders and made the decision to change the name of their church to, to more affiliate with BWC by calling it Beauregard, Hodesty Good Hope Church. What an honor. Mm -hmm. So we're prayerfully considering that trip. And this is the only two pictures I have. So <laughs> There they are holding up their their papers from BWC that we sent them. Okay. So, I want to cap it off. One is building block. The efforts of the one always lead to the many. One person, one church, one community, one nation. Sooner or later, the fruits of our labors will be seen and realized. Amen. The fruit of our prayers, our time, our money, our agape love will bear much fruit. And the Word of God promises that. Congratulations, BWC. Jehovah is well pleased with this body. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah.